Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to two nights, two nighter tea with the lunatics Theo Kogan and Jean Fury, authors of Fallopian Rhapsody, the story of the lunatics. We are so psyched to have you here tonight. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Di Diana's here. Hey, Diana. Hey, Sean. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I've been helping uh, produce all of the events for tonight for the past few months, and we are thrilled to have you here tonight. We're going to be doing a Q&A at the end of the evening with the authors of the book. And uh, just wanted to give you a quick little lay of the land. The chat functionality in Crowdcast is awesome. So use it like crazy. We love to keep these like really fun and lively and interactive. As you'll see, there's emojis in there. So like go to town. We're going to be keeping an eye on that throughout the evening. Uh, we're also doing a Q&A um, at about quarter to nine. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the section right down below where it says ask a question. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to bring up our fearless leader of tonight. She is a one-time 90s music, music critic for the Philadelphia City Paper, which is obviously so apropos for tonight's discussion. She's also formerly the editorial director of realsimple.com. She's an award-winning writer and editor and has contributed to Rolling Stone and Refinery29. She's just a badass, grown-ass lady. So please give it up for Margaret Detweiler. <laughs> How do you like that? That's like a fun new like <laughs> badass, grown-ass lady. I kind of like, it just came I, I don't mind it. <laughs> it's okay, good, it's good. Yeah, Cheers, we can, Robin. We can adapt. You got I like your, that our glasses. Got tea. I like, tonight I just have, have some water. But we match I blue. Was, I know. I think it's, well, t-shirts match, our shirts match, <laughs> our drink, our glasses Glasses. Match. Not got these glasses, glasses on. These well, I love it. Thank you for that intro. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, this is two nighter tea where we like to have our fancy mugs and sip some tea with special guests like Theo and Jean. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to uh, talk for a second about Two Nighters, which is our community that is putting on these Two Nighter Tea events. Um, we are a community for grown ass women, as Robin mentioned, um, and pretty much for Gen X women, but everybody's welcome. Um, we just tend to speak Gen X pretty well. Um, and totally. we also, do we? I said <laughs> we know totally. It. Totally. Not to like, with oh my God. Yeah. We totally like yeah. gag me with a spoon, but not totes. <laughs> I mean, we'll say totes because we're cool, but yeah. I watch Valley Girl. I know what mm -hmm. you're saying. Of course. Um, so yeah. So, um, and we run storytelling events too, which of course have been on pause, but we're going to, we're going to have one soon. I promise you actually I have some good ideas. Robin and I have some good ideas around that. Um, and, um, yeah, and so please check us out, tonight.com. Check us out on, ooh, I like Michelle's like, ooh. Uh, check us out on twonighters.com. Join our community. We're an amazing group of women. Um, would love to see you in there. Um, and yeah, so I would love to just sort of talk about Theo and Jean for a second. Um, yeah, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna peace out while you do You gonna peace out? All right. Uh, yeah, unless, awesome. you, unless you want me here for moral support. <laughs> totally fine with whatever that. you want to do I'm you know good. i'll stay till they come on and all right sounds off. good sounds all right. good all right um so yeah <laughs> so the luna chicks um you know i as robin mentioned i was a 90s music critic and i had a luna chicks poster in my office and <laughs> um wrote about them and loved them and um they have released six albums and toured internationally for almost 13 years wow. the new york times described them as feminist trashy righteous Foul, righteous, foul mouth, and certainly fun. And that is pretty good. Um, Theo Kogan is the lead singer of the band, the Little Chicks. And they, um, you may recognize her also from the band, Theo and the Skyscrapers, or when she spent years as a model for uh, CKB, Kenneth Cole, Betsy Johnson, Patricia Field. She's also an actress who appeared in Tadpole, Bringing Out the Dead and more. And she's the creator of New York lip gloss brand, Armor Beauty. Theo has been working for, as a makeup artist for over 10 years. Um, and finds being on the other side of the camera a fantastic creative experience, making people feel good and look good is a joyful and fulfilling experience. Um, Jean Fury uh, is a music journalist who's been published in The Village Voice, Billboard, Entertainment Weekly, Rolling Stone, Spin, New York Magazine, and elsewhere. She contributed to the book Women Who Rock, as did front woman Theo Kogan. So it's my great pleasure to bring both of them up tonight to talk about this new amazing book, Fallopian Rhapsody. 
please welcome Theo and Jean. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Hey, hey. What's How's up, it going? <laughs> Hi. It's good to see you. I love that green background, Theo. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. So um, yeah, and uh, Jean, I like your bookshelf. Very cool. <laughs> Right, a little feedback. Are you guys hearing that? I, I am. Mm. Mm. It's not good. Hmm. Yikes. Maybe let's see if I mute. Just so everybody knows, we did test this ahead of time. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Yeah, somebody come out of the bath. That was awesome. <laughs> come back, please. Come back. Say hi. Um, hi. <laughs> That's, you don't get that on every show. <laughs> no, you Kid don't. coming out of the bath. <laughs> This is Lucy, awesome. my spawn. Is that oh, Lucy? Hi, Lucy. Hi. Hey, Lucy. How are you? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, earbuds. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think, Theo, that might be you. Love you. I actually I just muted you. her. What? It's, it's not? Is it me? Let me. Theo, talk to us. <laughs> la, 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 la. Might be you, Robin. I hope not. But if that's the case, peace. Yeah, okay. How about now? Robin, say something. Did you mute? Okay, it's you. Because it's not I happening. I am so <laughs> embarrassed. All right. Have a great time, ladies. Bye. I just muted them, too. <laughs> yeah, I think it. Oh, now it's okay. All right. Well, anyway, <laughs> it's the three of us. Oh, I heard it again. <sighs> well, uh -oh. I, I don't hear it. I hear it. Oh, you guys. Hang on. Bear with us, folks. Just a little bit of technical difficulties. Yeah, it actually sounded like it was coming from Jean. Um, okay. Aha! Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's <laughs> your fault. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it wasn't me. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. You can leave and come back, Jean, if you want. All right. Oh. Well, why well, don't we have maybe have Theo read at this point? So we can that's a good idea. Time. That's a that's a good You're idea. You're so smart, Robin. Thank you. I've done this a couple of times. <laughs> so <laughs> Theo is going to read from Fallopian Rhapsody. Um, Theo, maybe you could set it up for us, the section you're going to read. Um, I, uh -oh. I I'm going to read from a fun part that uh, Margaret picked. Um, there's so many things I would love to share with all of you, but this is from the chapter Making a Scene. And it's, you know, sort of talking about how we, how we became who we were and how we acted and how we um, created, I guess. So this is in our collective voice and then there are voices of each of us. So I'll just, I'll read when I'll say who's talking when they're talking. Um, <clears throat> Theo really had a gift, this is the collective voice, Theo really had a gift for taking those underground cult influences and spinning them into gold. Her brain worked in mysterious ways that we were just in awe of. She made ridiculous, uh, ridiculousness an art form and used humor to talk about taboo to topics that people rather not think about, whether it was abusive relationships or eating disorders or getting her period. She was not afraid to go there and yank back the curtain blew our minds all the time. And here is, this is um, lyrics to uh, one of our songs. Can't have an inch of fat in my bod. Gotta get on the cheerleading squad. Play tryouts are next week. There's a foxy guy I gotta meet. Mama let me eat too much, but in my room I go in stuffed. Ipecac and x lax are my best friends. I'll have my head in the toilet till the end. Fingers just not long enough. This time the purge is gonna be tough. People tell me that I'm thin, then they ask about the bruise on my chin. When I'm home, I eat as much as I can. Pretty soon, I'll need a bedpan. No guys like me except for Lax, but he's my ex. Binge and purge the whole day through. I threw up on mom's good shoes. I made a mess in the school bathroom. Someone's bound to catch me soon. Binge and purge, yeah. 
Mom found me on the floor, blood stains on my Kristen Dior. Now I'm in the hospital. They feed me from a bag on the wall. Me and my friends do it all together. Circle purrs will make it better. Ruptured my esophagus, but I'm still a hippopotamus. Just can't seem to figure out why my teeth keep falling out. And those are the lyrics I wrote to Binge and Purge. Now this is my voice, Theo. There was never an agenda to focus on one thing versus another. It's not like I thought, we're going to start a band and I'm going to write about this. Those lyrics were just what came out of me. The reason my lyrics are twisted and funny is because I'm twisted and funny. <laughs> it's who I've been and still am since I can remember. Humor was one of my coping mechanisms. See, Jewish. Being funny is in my bones. You can certainly hear all of that in my lyric writing. A lot of the bands I loved were funny, even if they didn't mean to be. I thought the Misfits were funny, even though they took themselves seriously. I also related to some of the most fucked up songs and bands, like the Anti-Nowhere League, one of my favorites, because they were hilarious. I never saw how sexist they were because I could see myself writing songs about stupid, annoying dudes. I could be just as defiant, cold, and mean, and funny as they were. The Damned were theatrical and brilliant musicians and also funny. There was always an element of camp and the Muppet Show in a lot of things I liked. My bio should say, raised by TV. This is now in the collective voice. We were so in the moment of doing whatever felt right. And frankly, it all felt right. We didn't have any foresight, nor did we think about how people would interpret us. Whatever we felt like doing, we went ahead and did it, including getting naked and putting on squids, parents matching orange raincoats and rubber galoshes, and going to the deli in between writing songs. No reason, we just did it. You're really creating art in its purest form when you're not thinking, oh, this is how it's going to be, and this is going to be the outcome. Although we had an idea of what we thought we were, awesome and unstoppable rockers primed for world domination, it wasn't necessarily what we sounded like then. All we were capable of doing was letting whatever was inside move through us and come out. So, if we want to write songs about farting in the van or pooping on a cracker because that's what makes us laugh, we're going to do it. And why wouldn't we also write about our moms and our stupid teacher? At, oh, I skipped something. That's okay. Those things were all part of our lives. We were sharing whatever was there without thinking too hard about it. If there was one genuine thought, if there was one genuine thought out intention, it was to crack each other up. We never grew out of juvenile humor, ever. Burps are on our live album, burps are on our studio albums. Pooping, farting, burping, and getting our periods feature in a bunch of our songs. Never in a million years do we think a fucking fart could be considered a political statement, but for women especially, shame is associated with body stuff. Those totally normal actions that happen to every single species on the planet are being foul and improper for women. Fuck you, we're going to weaponize them and come after you. But the main reason we wrote about bodily function was functions was because farts are funny and obnoxious, burps are funny and obnoxious, and we were funny and obnoxious. Theo, a lot of that was because we had parents that were from the 40s and 50s who themselves dealt with very old-fashioned parents. They were different. There were different ways we broke free and rebelled against that. For me, whenever I burped at home, my mom would say, you're never going to get a boyfriend like that. And my response was to burp again. It was a rebellion. I'd burp at home at the dinner table, and I'd get yelled at. And I'd do it again, and again, and again. Gina. My grandmother would let him rip, and then she'd giggle. She had a silly streak. She stayed in a mode of adolescence. When she was in first grade, she was taken out of school to work in the fields back in Italy, so she never learned to read or write, and she never stopped wanting to play. She loved pranks and was a very funny lady, but for us, burping at the table when my parents were present was absolutely not allowed. And that's what made it so damn funny. Squid. My parents would say stuff like, Someday you're gonna have, you're gonna have, you're going to have a boyfriend who's gonna invite you to his parents' house and you're gonna embarrass yourself. And I was like, whatever. But back to the farting thing. It really all comes from the stuff we're not supposed to be doing. When I started having serious boyfriends, I would christen them with a juicy one. Then be like, see, I farted on your leg. I own you now. You're mine. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, it's unladylike. 
My favorite thing to do would be to belch and follow it up with it. Always a lady. Theo had a t-shirt that said always a lady. It was such a funny concept to me. Always a lady. Back to the collective voice. Menstruation is another bodily function that women are taught to feel shameful about and have to hide. And we did not want to hide anything. For one show, we made blood bags and taped them to the inside of our legs. On stage, we planned it so that we'd slam our legs together at the same time, creating this huge burst of blood. Such a magnificent sight. Many years later, a photo of one of these very moments was part of a big ad campaign for Vans sneakers, except the corporate folks at Vans must not have appreciated our theatrics because the photo was doctored to remove the fake blood from our thighs. In a lot of ways, we were socially unconscious. It's a, important for us to point this out because a few years into our existence, the press often lumped us in with the Riot Girl movement, which was lazy at them. First and most obvious, we sound nothing like Riot Girl bands. That should have been the end of any attempt at comparison. Second, Riot Girl specifically began as a way to get more women's voices and viewpoints out into the open. And that's awesome. We support it wholeheartedly, but that wasn't our agenda. Not intentionally, at least. Unwittingly, perhaps. Although Riot Girl and Lunatics were in the same fight together, we had completely separate paths. It felt like there was a big difference between us and the well-educated, feminist, theory-savvy girls in those bands. They got organized and worked hard building a collective grassroots movement in punk. Then there was us. We started our trashy band for dumb fun, and we couldn't have quoted feminist theory to save our lives. Our first album was called Baby Sitters on Acid. Need we say more? We were just living, and then one day the band was there, and the microphones were turned on, and suddenly people were listening. We communicated a feminist message from the get-go because feminism was intrinsically part of who we were as individuals, as New York City girls punching our way through a hostile, sex sexist environment. We can't really say we put any thought into it beyond that. Framework. We are Gen Xers, first generation daughters of the 70s feminist revolution, born and raised to be equals in every way and told by our parents and teachers that we could do and be whatever we wanted. We were set off to fly in a world we were told was fair, equal, and open to everyone, encouraged to be doctors, lawyers, and presidents. There is nothing standing in your way but you. Go get him, tiger. <laughs> Every day we walked out our doors into a world that didn't quite get the same memo. God be with you, finding yourself on the same long block with a construction crew posted up for lunch, waiting on their next contestant for the cat call catwalk or having to do a, a side turn protruding elbow maneuver on some guy who nestled his dick in your ass on a sardine pack B train. Not to mention the endless contradictions coming from inside our household. Be a leader, but be a lady. Wouldn't you want to fart in someone's face? <laughs> if we existed as powerful women in the world, which we did, and we were also on stage as powerful women in the world, then hopefully other women were inspired by that. Together, all that combined energy created an air of don't fuck with us. Once we were solidified as a band, we became this force of nature that you simply could not fuck with. At the same time, we intuitively knew that every time we walked out on a stage, we were there to represent for our half of the human race. We knew people expected us to suck. We came to battle and to win and prove a point, and it felt important. That is a responsibility we took very seriously. There was a feeling of, watch this, motherfuckers, hold on to your face. We didn't know what that meant or even what it entailed, but it came with us wherever we went. Our attitude before each show was, we're going to go into this club and we're going to kill it. And this is the little illustration at the end. Yeah. So that's some of our book, everybody. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Yay! <laughs> I gotta remember that. Be a leader, be a lady when you want to fart in someone's face. <laughs> so good, so good. Well, um, I have to say, like, this book is so dang good, you guys. I mean, I don't know how many people have it who are here um, at chatting in this event, um, but it, you have to go get it. It's like, I couldn't put it down. 
The stories are just hilarious and harrowing. Like I, I was scared for you. I was like cheering you on. Anyway, I just, I just loved it. It was, and it, it brought me back to the that time, which you just capture so well with so much detail. So kudos to you both. Yeah. Um, what? So, and it's an interesting style. I mean, you do it in kind of this. Uh, you have sort of the the general commentary, and then you have really specific um, quotes from each of the band members. What what made you decide to do it with that structure? There are just so many voices and uh, conflicting uh, memories of how things went down. And it just <laughs> seemed like it we wouldn't be doing the story of the band justice unless we had it grouped that way. And honestly, we, we just started out that way, not really knowing it was gonna be the final format. And once we got into it, I was like, I, I can't imagine telling this story any other way. Yeah, it works really well. And it almost feels like a zine a little bit. I don't know why, it just feels, and just with the photo, I mean, I, who doesn't love photos in a book? Like, I just, it reminds me of just, you know, like you got like all the photos, <laughs> love it, love it. It's so juicy and jam packed with stuff. So, um, well done. Well, that was like, we were really, we were really fighting for color photos. We didn't think we were going to get them and we wanted to put our art in there and we didn't think that was going to happen. And then it all kind of just happened as it was being put together and we were just had to be like, you, you have to understand more is more with us. Like it should be like every page should be packed with right. something visual, whether it's words or drawings or pictures. And, um, and I think once they saw the pictures, they decided to put them in color because that was unexpected and we were so excited. That was cool. Yeah, it's, um, it is, it feels that way. It feels, but it's like, but, and the, the amount of detail, I'm just like, how do you remember all that stuff from the nineties? I'm like, wow. But it, yeah, I mean, what was the process? Like, did you all, were all, were all the bandmates in one room or was it just individual interviews or how did that work? It was a lot of both. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time in one room, snacking a lot and talking a lot. Um, it wasn't really, I can't really say it was a formal Q&A process. We all just kind of sat and they talked and I listened and I asked more questions and, and we would break off. I'd have one-on-one -on -one interviews with all the members of the band um yeah it was a lot of both a lot of both yeah nice mm -hmm. um so i i love sort of like let's talk about early on in the book you talk a lot about how the band how you all met and you met so early right you met um was it uh squid in, in middle in a uh, middle school right mm -hmm. yep. so how did that tell us a little bit about those early days and like how you all came together well, um, I met S Squid in middle school, and then I met Gina, I guess, right before I was, or a year before I was going into high school through a friend from sleepaway camp. And then me and Gina ended up, we, so we all went to what ended up being LaGuardia. And then my first period class, which was like art something at LaGuardia, Gina was in it. And I was like, oh my God, that's the girl I met. I guess I knew she was going there. And then I was still friends with Sid, Squid, who was going to performing arts. And then the next year, the schools were combining. So I set up like a date with the three of us because I was like, you got to meet my friend Gina to Sid. And I was like, Gina, you got to meet my friends, you know, Sid. And, um, and then we all met. And I mean, I don't know if I want to spoil our first date out. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot funny. of things. I'm like, don't spoil it. It's so good. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> yeah. that's awesome but um and then like moving so you met in in both middle school high school and then like it sounded like you guys were always sort of into art and fashion and creating things and how mm. did that all culminate in starting a band 
We, you know, I think that's part of the sort of like, you can do anything you want thing that we were taught as kids, you know, talking about that in that chapter of just like, we just, we saw people around us doing it. We saw plenty of women doing it around us. And we just were like, well, we all like really good music. Why not? Let's try it. You know, we just believed in ourselves <laughs> enough to think that we could pull something off, you know, without having any agenda whatsoever on like, this is, you know, years later, we're going to be talking about this and have a book with Jean. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I think what we're you, all artists and we just needed to express in this way at the time. Yeah. It there's it feels like there's a lot you all seem to have a lot of confidence. Like it to, to me it comes off that way like just in sort of what you're saying too like you felt you just felt like you could do it. I mean what what do you attribute that to? Is it family at all Being like your parents? And Yes, my parents were musicians. I came from a lot of musicians, but I think it was like a combination of that and just like, of course we can do it. Why not? Why couldn't we? You know, we can do all these other things. We're all artists. We're all, you know, we had all this stuff at our fingertips and, you know, Sid and, and Gina already had instruments. And and my, you know, I was just like, I, I, I assumed that I could sing and knew that I could, you know, and didn't want to lug drums around. So <laughs> I was right. like, I'll sing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, there was no thought of like, of not doing it once we decided yeah. to do it. What I think is, is so interesting too, is you all worked real, seemed to work really hard at what you did. You know, sometimes it comes off, you like mm -hmm. think, oh, they're just putting on makeup and getting up there and playing and, you know, but the amount of hard work that went into it is really evident. Um, what, is that true? Like, did you feel that you were sort of like putting in a oh, ton of yeah. effort? Yes, <laughs> I think that once, once we, once we got going, it was like, okay, we really do have to show that we are, you know, better than most or everyone, or at least, you know, feel confident that we are, or, you know, and be good enough because really as women, they, people did expect you to get up and be terrible, unfortunately. And mm -hmm. um, so it was very important to, to be really good after a while, once we learned how to play. <laughs> because at first we really did not know <laughs> at all. Um, yeah. But yeah, it just, it became like a mission. It was kind of like, you know, like uh, it was, it was, it was a mission. I mean, that's really what it was. It was like gangbusters were going to go and do this and prove, you know, ourselves to ourselves, really. Yeah. I felt like you were, you got kind of stopped at each step of the way though, with like people trying to figure out how to categorize you and putting you yeah. up with these like bands that didn't really make sense to connect like Sonic Youth and Dinosaur Jr. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> um, and you tell some really like honest stories about those experiences. And to me, sort of like, I, I don't know, is it break the veil of just like what those bands were like? And I appreciated that so much, mm. um, especially Sonic <laughs> Youth. I don't know. I just, they get so lauded. And I was like, anyway. There are no Can you tell us that cows. story a little bit? No. <laughs> what? No sacred no cows. Sacred. No. No. <laughs> How did you pull some of those stories out, Jean? Um, I, I'll be very honest. This was not difficult. The hard part was um, trimming down everything. Right. They're, they're just, and I really do give the band tremendous credit in how honest and, and free they were. And not like, not afraid of who they, whose feelings they might hurt. They were like, you know, fuck this. We're grown ass, we're grown ass women now, and <laughs> and we're telling our story. Um, yeah, I didn't have to, you know, twist any arms. Yeah, can you tell a little bit of that Sonic Youth story? <laughs> so good. I don't know. I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, no, we can. Um, so we played it. It was either our second or third show. And um, it was at 
the limelight in the chapel, the old limelight, which is infamous for many things. And um, and we played our show, and then someone was like, "Oh, Kim and Thurston from Sonic Youth are here," and um, they like they I can't remember if they wanted to talk to us. I don't think they did. I don't know, but um, they were looking for a band of girls to produce, apparently. And um, then Squid got a call from their English label, like not short, not long after that. And he was like, we want to, you know, I want to make a record for you guys. And then we went into the studio with them and it just did not work out. <laughs> because as I said, we didn't know how to play at that point. And they saw us as trying to be sort of a noise band. And we saw ourselves trying to be like this sort of, you know, stadium rock band like Kiss or Alice Cooper. And so we went into the studio and like, Cindy's um, distortion pedal started dying and it sounded like a lawnmower. And they were like, yeah, 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 turn that up. And we were like, no, no. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and they never really like talked to us. They just kind of did stuff and were there. And we were, I mean, we were literally teenagers. So it's like, I'm sure we were just complete jerks. And, you know, we're probably like, excited and felt entitled now that we were like wow we're getting signed you know even though it's like it wasn't the big label as an english labels but they had he had dinosaur jr he had them he had all these he had like frank black he had he had a lot of bands from that time and um and it just didn't work out but you'll have to read for the rest yeah <laughs> read for the rest yeah, um, that guy, could, I, it's a lot of these folks like Paul Smith could be like a character in a movie too, just like the the guy yeah. who sort of puts you with the, you're going to be big and famous, ladies, you know? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought yeah. about that? Like the movie I version of the book? Ever... <laughs> oh my God, yeah, we're dying for right? that. And people keep saying it, so I feel like it's going to happen. I really, really want to. Yeah, see totally. It would be so cool. Would be awesome. All right, so who do you want to play you in the movie version? Well, maybe Margot Robbie. That's what I was just gonna say. Yes, that's so good. So I don't know, there might, I mean, maybe, and then I was thinking also of, um, oh God, what's her name who was in The Great as like younger. Oh yeah, yeah. Like oh the yeah. The youngest version. Is Alda Fanning. Fanning. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Could be good. Yeah. I don't know. All right. We got ideas. But the girls have said they want J Law to play me, but I, I don't know. She might be like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what do you think? I could see. I mean, she's good, but yeah, Margot Robbie would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. Right. <laughs> she could pull um, up all the makeup. <laughs> I, <laughs> totally. Right. She's already there. She's already halfway there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, speaking of makeup, so you and you've merged, you've taken sort of what you're doing with the um, Luna Chicks and you, you know, you're now a makeup professional um, as well. So many other things that you're doing, but that's one thing that you're doing. Um, did you just teach yourself how to do this? I mean, is it part of like the trajectory of what you did in the Luna Chicks, like just the layers and layers? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was self taught, but it's so different and taught by drag queens. Uh, certainly and it's, it's incredibly different doing makeup on someone other than yourself and so that took a lot of learning and I had a lot of great um makeup artists that were so willing to help me and teach me and give me stuff for my kit and tell me what the best things were and so it was like a very welcoming um you know business to get into for me because of my pants right so um and again it's art because I mean I just feel like, again, as an artist, it's like, it's uh, the art's going to come out one way or another. And now it's right. coming out that way. And now I'm also like started singing again. So. Um, and you have that chapter, art. there's a chapter about mental health where you talk about um, some of those layers um, that you're, you were sort of hiding behind and building upon. And mm -hmm. can you talk about how, was that a difficult chapter to write? It was. I mean, there's, we had so much and I wrote so much more, you know, there was, uh, it was hard to write and, and it was, 
I had like anxiety about the book coming out and letting that out into the world. And then I was like, you know what, if this is part of who I am and if it helps somebody else that's going through tough times, you know, it's like, it, it, there's something like freeing about being like, yeah, this is, this is what happened. This is, you know, and like, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. I thought that was, it's very moving. Um, comes kind of later in the book, you know, I think you actually, I mean, a lot of there, I was impressed at how everybody sort of addressed, you know, drug use and um, as you did mental health issues and um, people were very forthcoming in the book about just the struggles. I mean, it just, I, I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing. Oh, some folks are still here. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's good. Um, <laughs> But, and I'm wondering too, yeah. like you were, you sound in the book, you sound a little bit like the person who sort of also kind of kept it all together and was like the responsible one in some ways. Is that accurate? I'm curious why you never, in, you know, um, I was just gonna say, I'm curious why you never sort of fell down that pit. It seems like it was so readily available to everybody in the band and in any yeah, band. Yeah, it was, really. it was. Yeah, and I I certainly played on days off, you know, I, I was not innocent and I did plenty of things, but there were certain drugs that were a no-no from the get-go because we saw, I mean, as I was like coming, starting to hang out at like, you know, 14, 15, and we knew people who had already OD'd and died or that we saw their band and then they were dead like a week later, like no joke, from a heroin overdose. And so that was like, it just became this thing of like, you could do anything else, but not that. So I pretty much did everything else <laughs> that there was. Um, and, um, and because I had such a huge responsibility of like, if I couldn't perform, then nobody could perform. It was like a big weight and, and I was too responsible. I was always, you know, even at my worst as a teen, I would always get home. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I just have that in me. I'm a Capricorn. I'm just like, I have, I, you know, I'm responsible. I'm just like that. So I think that was, that's just part of my personality, luckily for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jean, <laughs> what was it, you know, pulling some of these more difficult stories from people? Did you, was it the same thing that they came out or did you push in any directions? I'm trying to think back because it was, First of all, this was years of our lives. So I was like, going to ask you that. Like, did this yeah. back? How long did this take? Like, years. was this like a long Actual years? Like five. Because I remember six, you guys. Know. It was going to come out earlier, right? And then the pandemic happened, or did I make that up in my head? No? I, we had. Oh God, I'm going to guess anywhere between five to seven years on and off wow. before yeah. we got the book deal, and then we got the book deal in 2000 at the end of 2019 and we were joking with each other like oh my god we should get extra money because we have to write this book during the most stressful presidential election of our lives and that was like the tip of the iceberg like yeah it, oh yeah i can't um overstate how hard everybody rallied to get the book done considering people have families they have partners they have you know families out of state out of the country uh -huh. it was it was herculean truly um, wow what was the question <laughs> <laughs> i don't even remember i was just like oh i'm, I'm always so interested oh, in oh. like oh go ahead getting them to talk about sensitive stuff yeah yes yeah. i would be lying if i said no they were forthcoming with everything but um Mostly they were, but there were some parts where they were like, oh, I don't know. And there was no, there was absolutely no pressure for me. There was no pressure from the other bandmates. They all really came to it on their own. And I think mm -hmm. everybody in the end saw the value of telling their truth. And I think a lot of it was, um, I could be, I'm speaking out of turn, but I think it was a, a way for them to continue to show their love and support to each other as friends being like you know you can tell this story you're supported we've got your back go ahead and um yeah it was 
it was intense. There were tears, there were, you know, ugly moments, uh, not ugly, but just like sad. And, you know, you realize um, all the shit that went down and uh, how things could have gone very differently for any one of them. Um, yeah, but I think everybody came to the conclusion on their own that this was um, important and that we were going to address it. And I'm so glad we did. Yeah, me too. And uh, what were you all, you all stayed sort of friends. Was there any, um, so it wasn't difficult to get you all together because there wasn't a bad breakup really at any point, which is also admirable, <laughs> you know, and that doesn't happen with a lot of bands. Yeah. For so many years. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really fun getting to like, you know, we all did individual time with Gene, like doing interviews. And then there was some point where we did it together. And then we we're like, God, what, like the collective memory was so incredible because it helped so much. Cause you know, it's like, we each have our own memories. Right. And then uh -huh. there were certain things, there was like something Gina said one time that I, totally blocked out 150 percent had i was like oh, oh my god like that was gone from my mind you know and so being together and talking about stuff made us all remember things that left on our own we probably wouldn't have remembered so that was very cool too and then gene just like having to you know transcribe and put it together to, it's just she's we could not have done this without without her and um <laughs> She, you know, I, I said this before, she had like, when we were getting closer to sort of really putting it together, um, toward the end of, of writing it, then she had this board that looked like, you know, a serial killer map with all these like post-its. <laughs> and then she would be like, okay, wait a second. And then she'd like move them around. <laughs> it was amazing. That's awesome. I don't know why I had that thing. It wasn't accurate for more than three seconds at a clip. <laughs> It was, it was accurate for in three second intervals before it changed. <laughs> but yeah, cool. they were like, you're going to keep this up. And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay. So there's a, the first um, quote you have in about your book is from, um, I'll just, let me just read the quote and then I'll tell you who it's from. Their name alone is a stroke of genius and bless them for keeping the faith and rock alive. Now Fallopian Rhapsody confirms the myth. And after I read the book, I lost weight. My hair got thicker. My nails grew strong enough to climb trees. And my sex life soared to unbelievable heights. Debbie Harry of Blondie. Now tell me how you got that Debbie Harry quote and, you know, about Debbie Harry and, and your fandom and her fandom and how you guys met. Give us a little bit of that scoop. Um, I think that I probably met her at the club squeeze box in the 90s um she was friends with michael schmidt who ran the party and with miss guy who was like my drag you know see uh I, not really my drag mother but like my drag <laughs> brother sister who taught me what contour was um and so i met her and, you know, I was always sort of tongue tied around her. And then I did this performance that I believe Gina also played, where we used to perform at this club called Fra Fraggle Rock, which was Brooklyn's <laughs> from Meow Mix. And then it, would, it moved around a little bit. And we did a Blondie night and, I, and, and Debbie and Chris Stein found out. And then she came to the, they both came to the show. And so I was sort of like, you know, shitting in my dress as I, was playing and then afterwards she came up she came down to the dressing room and i was like hi and she's like you're brave very brave <laughs> and i was like oh, thank you and she was like maybe we should do a duet sometime and i was like name the day and gave her my phone number and like two weeks later she called me to sing on no exit so I sang backups on some songs on No Exit, which was the album for those of you who don't know that Maria was on at their like big comeback. So, and then we were just like, she's been so supportive and cool throughout knowing her. Like she's just such a fucking cool lady. Um, mm. 
and I was, you know, I, I worshipped her. So it took me a long time to be able to talk like a normal person around her. <laughs> Even after, you know, when I when I recorded with them, I was like, okay, and now I'm like. I'm in the inner sanctum, like, cool, like, I can be normal. But even after that, there were times I saw her, I'd be like, I, 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 you know, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't, right? Like, that's awesome. Um, what is something in the book that fans of the Lunachicks would find surprising? Just how smart hmm. they are. And I don't <laughs> know how that comes up, but... I think people who knew them tangentially, um, they had this goofy, stupid, you know, if you really weren't paying that much attention were there just for the show, absolutely no judgment. It was a great show. Um, but I think their level of intelligence and introspection and just their insight um, might surprise people who didn't, who thought they were just like the yuck yuck gross out band yeah that's my takeaway theo do you have a anything different that might be surprising i mean i mean uh i was like you know because clearly this was like such a group project and i know that gene's an amazing writer and i've written enough that i know i can write pretty good but yeah, you wrote for two nights. Like seeing, I uh, yeah, I remember did. And, and did a story. Um, yeah, <laughs> live. And um, but seeing like reading what the other girls wrote, I I was um, like they always like I love these women so much, and just seeing what good writers everyone is. Also, I was like, you know, it's like you know, you know here are these people I know like better than anybody in the world. And, and then I still learning new things about them. And that's really, really cool. Um, and I think also like for people to see and know how strong our friendship is and how much we got through and that, uh, you know, it's our, it's there for each other. Like I know that if something happens that I can go to them and then without question. So that's really special. That's beautiful. That's awesome. It's what a real <laughs> friend is. And you've kept them mm -hmm. for this long. Yeah. Um, uh, one last question before we kind of go to questions and we have a giveaway to talk about. Um, you know, it's clear throughout the book that um, you just keep, uh, you talked about this, like bucking up against sort of blockade, 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 blockade. And I mean, to me, that's feminist trailblazer all over the place, just like the way that, you know, you are creating music that really didn't, is, is hard to describe, you know, and like, it's, it's, it's tough, I, I think, for, for people to sort of like, well, are they this, are they that? And, um, and also just in a space where men dominated. Um, and so to me, you guys are really feminist trailblazers. Do you, do you see yourselves that way? Um, I guess maybe because everyone said it enough. It's like it's it's when when you're just being yourself, you know, it's uh, you're just yourself. But um, I mean, there are even things like just seeing like drag makeup come into the world as like a thing on Instagram and all like there are so many things that we were doing that in some ways was we were the only ones doing it and it was very ahead of our time. But mm -hmm. we just did it. We weren't thinking about it. And we weren't thinking about, oh, yeah, we're trailblazers. But yeah, I mean, I guess we were. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, it, it, I know. Again, sort of unbeknownst <laughs> to us. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it's sort of one of those things like you, you don't know it when it's happening. But as just like looking back at the right. chronology of everything, you can kind of see it all play out. Um, yeah. Are there bands you've, one more, just sort of, I thought of like, are there bands you feel like you've inspired? Um, I mean, I, you talk a lot about, you know, I, I think we can see sort of some of your heroes, but I would bet that you've inspired lots of bands. Have you, have you um, talked with younger um, bands or had any connection? I mean, Jean turned me on to a band that she said that were our big fans, which, and I really like them called Destroy Boys. Mm. They're super cute. And um, 
I mean, I assume there are others, and we certainly get we get a lot of um, messages from you know young younger women who are playing guitars and you know covering our songs and then have their own bands and are just like if you listen to my band, I'll you know would mean so much. And I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's awesome. So yeah, I mean, I hope so. I guess is the answer. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. I know so. Um, all right, so we are going to go to some questions, but um, we also want to talk about, a, we're going to give the book away. Um, Jean's got a copy, right, of like a signed edition. Is that right? Yeah. That <laughs> Back can there be yours. somewhere. Okay. <laughs> um, and actually, do one of you want to ask the question we were talking about? Like, what was, what was the question? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, we'll okay, put it in the so chat, too. Between... Becky Reck and Chip English, the band had an interim drummer who was also in a popular band at the time. Mm -hmm. I can give who was that drummer? Answer. There's an answer oh. in the chat. Not Helen. Not, Not Helen. Helen. Nope, that was later. The first one to get it right will get a free copy of the book. She and it's should, I another, should I give another hint? Um, um, well, uh, uh, yes, but the name, yeah, the of name. The drummer. That's the right band. That's the right band. <laughs> is? What is her name? You can do it. She was the first drummer for the Beastie Boys. <gasps> there you go. There yes. You go. yes. <laughs> Kate Schellenbach. All right. We love her. So um, Riverdale Punks, <laughs> I love that name. Um, just oh, uh, no. email no. for a copy of the book. We'll get it out to you. Um, email uh, hello at tonight.com if you would. Hello tonight.com. Thank you, Robin, in the chat. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. And let me let me open up the questions you guys have been asking. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's see. So how do you feel about playing shows again? I have tickets for New York and punk rock bowling, I think, so from Myra. Um, very excited. Um, uh, it's, it's, it, it was crazy because of the pandemic and we had been, you know, rehearsing for like six months and then the pandemic happened and then we stopped playing again for you know a year plus and we started again in may and the closer we get to the shows happening the more excited we're all getting and and so like excited and nervous and mostly excited <laughs> 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 gotta figure out the outfits you know <laughs> oh yeah very important but very like so excited that people are excited because we you know when we first booked the new york shows we we were sort of like, wow, you know, Webster Hall, that's kind of big. Like what, you know, what if only 200 people buy tickets and then we were sold out and had to add another show within like 24 hours. So that was like amazing. It feels really good. Thanks for asking. <laughs> okay, here's here's another one from Margaret. Um, did you keep tour di diaries that you could pull from and would this project have been harder or easier if social media had existed then? Ooh, good one. Ooh. Maybe that's she too kept questions. every postcard that she ever sent to her parents. Um, so we had those. I feel like, Theo, did you keep a diary? I had diaries, but at some point like, after a breakup, I like burn, literally burned them all. Okay, so Theo didn't have any diaries. So, uh, <laughs> but I had all these tour, I had all these tour books. I yeah. had all these like tour booklets that had dates and um, so many photos. I mean, that was sort of the diary it was photographs. Yeah, I, I have no idea about the social media aspect of it. Yeah, I have no idea. It would have probably, it would have just been that much more information that we would have had to come through. Yeah, we would have to be on Instagram, Don't forget it. Yeah, Facebook. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn, Pinterest, yeah, <laughs> everywhere, oh TikTok. I'm glad we didn't have social media back then. We would have been yeah. in more trouble. 
<laughs> well, yeah, you were wheat, wheat pasting your flyers on, you know, I love that story too, yeah. about like having just like, who could wheat paste the most flyers up and get them up on a pole? <laughs> oh my God. Boy, is that a like Gen X moment? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, okay. So when the band was being interviewed, did you look at pictures to help jog your memory and remember stories? Crying, laughing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And we saved yeah. everything. There were yeah. boxes upon boxes in all of our houses. Like it couldn't even be housed in one central location. <laughs> I'd go pick up a bag from Theo. There'd be a box from Sid. Gina had all the flyers like meticulously arranged. Oh yeah, I have flyers too. Yeah. And we we WhatsApp Cindy one night, Cindy who lives in Germany, and we we're just holding up pictures and just crying, dissolving into laughter. So yeah, those <laughs> photos help a lot. That's yeah. good, that's good. Um, do you have any footage of doing a duet with Debbie Harry? No, that no. was before like, you know, you had your, no, unfortunately. That was, you know, pre having like a, ca a video camera on you all, at all times, basically pre phone and I had no foresight into thinking to bring a video camera and probably would have been too nervous anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, also, there's that story of like the, the photo of you between Keith Richards, is it, I think it's you, right? Keith Richards, no, is that you? Keith Richards and... It's me, was, Keith and Iggy. And Iggy Pop, right? And you're like, you don't have a, somebody took that photo. So here, we'll, we'll also make a, like announcement. If you have that photo, <laughs> was yeah. it in Germany? No, where was it? No, it was here. It was I was here, here. in New York, okay. Oh my God. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. Um, who are some ba young bands now that you like? Um, well, Destroy Boys. And um, Lucy, my daughter, is really into Jasmine Bean, and I just love how mm. um, theatrical, like, she sort of, like, reminds me of us, but then, like, turned up to, like, a, you know, a, a, I don't know, a different, you know, a different level of, like, there's a lot of blood and makeup, and I love it. And, um, <laughs> and I like Amal and Sniffers, and I like... Um, Surfboard and who else do I like? Oh, I'm the, well, obsessed with Sloth the Rust. Windows. They're my favorite new band. Who? They're who? Sloth Rust. Oh, is it metal Ooh. or is it? No. No, it's like weird, queer, punk, heartbreak. Oh, cool. Surf weirdness. It's so good. Ooh, nice. that sounds good. Wait, how do you spell that? Sloth. Sloth. Rust. Rust. Yes. <laughs> Two words? I'm just gonna one put word. it in. One word. Oh, sorry. Sloth rest. All right, we're all gonna go listen to sloth rest. After the lunatics, of course. Yeah. All right, just a couple more questions in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wonder if your musical palette has expanded over time. Mine has squeezed like an accordion. Has it expanded? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's cute. Oh, definitely. I mean, I was kind of always into all kinds of music, you know, I was like a big metal head and, and we all always liked Funkadelic and there, like, we all had like a whole broad thing going on. And, um, and I'm just like, I, I kind of, these days I listen to more, like I listen, I love, um, Janelle Monet and MIA and, um, I've been listening to a lot and I even like some of like Saweetie and, um, Doja Cat and like I'm really and and um I'm into a lot of the lady rappers I have to say because I feel like they're so punk and so cool and um yeah it really truly <laughs> it's funny yeah awesome well um I think we're we've got our winner we've got our um Anything else that you guys want to share with this crew that has burgeoned to 40 people, which is nice. Keep people keep joining. Yeah, yay. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what I've been liking to sort of leave people with is like, you know, 
instead of which I'm sure this crowd, you know, <laughs> if you have friends who are having kids, if you're having a kid, if you're having a daughter, if you know little girls, you know, and boys too, but um, you know, don't give them a Barbie doll, give them an instrument or something, mm. or a hammer. <laughs> you know. Good um, advice. I think that yeah. I love it. <laughs> Jean, any parting words of wisdom? Oh, no, just thank you so much to everybody who's oh. tweeted about the book and had us on their amazing, cool show to talk about the book. Margaret, that's you. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. All the feedback I is wonderful, and we're so grateful, really. It sounds cliche, but it really does mean so much to us. Well, the book is mm -hmm. great. You know, you never know what to expect. Like, I'm I'm not always a fan of um, music, like, you know, sort of histories always. Like, sometimes it can be really dry. Me this too. is not, this is not dry. <laughs> it's like a juicy damn read. So every one of you needs to get it. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you both so much uh, for your time. And tonight, this was really a great conversation. And um, thank you to the audience. You're great in the chat, lots of fun. Um, so appreciate all of you. And uh, please check out uh, tonight.com um, and tonighters.com, our brand new community where we're having awesome conversations. Theo's in there. Jean, I gotta get you in there. I'll get in there. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, and we'll, uh, we'll keep this going and thank you, Robin, for thank being you, Robin. our uh, MC. Can you yeah, come up and say you. goodbye real quick? Oh, hell and yeah. And, and by the way, I, I actually, I'm waiting for my light to go on. Uh, I had a question for you, Theo, because now that you're doing yeah. makeup, I'm like, do you have to hold back burps sometimes? Because are you ever like tempted to like burp in somebody's face? Cause you're like, <laughs> you're being uncooperative. I got a belch just sitting here waiting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Burps, holding in farts all day. I mean, really. Let's sure. be honest. It's rough it. out there. <laughs> rough to hold in those farts. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So we're going to end this night on a fart. I know. Um, and uh, <laughs> the other thing I was going to say, Theo, um, is our birthdays are really close <laughs> to each other. We're both Christmas babies. So... I, I feel like oh, pain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to send you a song. It's called Jesus Steals My Thunder. Oh, it's a good one. It's I wrote hilarious. it. I'll send it to you. Awesome. I, think you can, I think you can write it. That's the story of my life. That is exactly. the story of my life. Exactly. Yeah, mine's day after Christmas. And so I totally, <laughs> I totally feel your pain. And just one, I want to let our audience know we have an event tomorrow night. Um, which is how to organize your digital photos. So if there's a- <laughs> Very different. Where were you when we were writing this book? I know. I'm not organized. I'm not, I'm not, oh, I don't know how to organize this, but it's- Yeah, it's a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. If you go to the link at the bottom, um, yeah, you will you can get the details there. Eight o'clock, right back here. And it's not even just like your digital photos online. It's like memory cards and, you know, like old- um, All that shit. Digital camera like yeah lot mm. yeah. it's a juicy one and it's if you're a member of two nighters um it's 15 bucks unless you're a founding member in which it's free if you're not a member it's uh 20 bucks i think right robin so right. cheap yeah. it's cheap for all the information you're going to get it's going to be lots of fun mm -hmm. lots of details so join us yeah be good. Okay. yeah so um cool <laughs> well this was i loved all the, the conversation was lively and fun as expected so I'm really excited to read the book. And thank you for being here, Theo and Jean and thank everybody you. in the chat. You. Thanks for being so uh, in interactive with us. Yeah. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night. Bye. 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 <laughs>